Hey everybody, Cole here with Classic Mini DIY, and on today's episode, we are gonna be setting the preload for the Turbo Wastegate Actuator. So, stay tuned for that. Now, you guys can probably tell that the space behind me is a little bit different. And that is because I am in my new workshop right now. Now you can see that the walls are not up and the space is not quite done yet, but I did wanna get back into making a few videos where I still can in the workshop as it sits right now. So if you're looking for the garage build, the whole rebuild of this new space, um, that episode is gonna be coming out relatively soon. Still uh, ironing out some stuff with city planning and permits and all sorts of different stuff. So it's a little bit delayed. But talking about today's episode, we are going to be setting the preload on the wastegate actuator on my brand new GT1752 Turbo. So jump over to my workbench and I'm gonna start showing you guys how to do this. It's a pretty easy process, so episode won't be too long. Now what we have here is a GT1752 style turbo. This is an aftermarket recreation of the Garrett GT1752. This one is an aftermarket replacement for a Saab 9.3, funny enough. But Garrett no longer makes brand new GT1752s. Um, and as a result, the aftermarket world has really stepped up to kind of create turbos that will suit those various applications. Now in my setup, I am going to be running this GT17 because it's a really, really nicely paired turbo size for a 1275, 1293 setup that's targeting around 15 PSI. Um, I hopefully can hit that target. We'll see how that all goes. But if you guys are looking for a turbo to slap on your Mini, um, or if you have a need for one on a Saab 9.3, um, I am gonna start carrying this turbo on my merch store. Um, so if you wanna help support the channel and you need a turbo for your car, um, these things are gonna be there for sale um, for quite an affordable price. Now, on this episode, what we're gonna be doing is setting the pretension on our wastegate actuator here. Now, for those of you who don't know how all of this stuff works, um, it looks really complicated, but in reality, it's not actually that bad. Let me pop off the little lock ring here, and then I'm gonna show you guys how this works. So, the wastegate actuator, go ahead and take that off. And you have two different sides to a turbo. You have the induction side and the exhaust side. Now the way that this works and the way a turbo works is that as exhaust starts funneling in and firing into this turbocharger here, it is going to start spinning up the impeller. And the impeller is this little doodad right inside here. And when he spins, when this spins, especially at a high rate of speed, it starts compressing the air that's going inside this unit here. So this is where your filter would go, um, or you'd have an intake that comes off of this. And then this, goes into your engine. So it's turbocharging, it's boosting up that air inside, firing it through the turbo, and then shooting it down inside the car. Now, that is a reason why turbos take a little bit of time to spool up. Um, what's happening is you have to generate enough exhaust gas to spin the impeller and then boost that air that's going into your car before you can actually get the power associated with it. Now on the back side here, this is what's called an internal wastegate turbo. And what that means basically is this little flapper right here is inside the actual turbocharger. So you don't have any sort of venting process that is actually external to the, uh, the turbocharger here. And it's kind of nice because all of this is integrated in here. But if you have size constraints, sometimes this big actuator unit right here um, doesn't fit in the space that you're looking at. So like this turbo is not a direct bolt-on for um, a rear-mounted turbo setup. Um, you might need to adjust it a little bit in order to make it fit a rear-mounted turbo on a Mini. Now, what's happening here is exhaust is going in this side right here, spinning up that turbo and creating boost. Now, when you let off your accelerator or you are reaching your peak boost, you're reaching the point at which you would want to uh, you know, 
bypass the turbo and prevent any more or higher PSI boost inside your engine, this wastegate actuator is tied to a spring inside here and this is connected to your actual intake so it knows how much pressure is inside your intake. So when it reaches the pre-configured boost amount, the pre-configured pressure, it is going to open this flap a certain amount to allow exhaust gas to exit and bypass the actual turbo unit and go straight into your exhaust. This hole right here is running out to your exhaust pipes in the rear of your car. So pretty simple concept overall, um, but what we gotta do today is set preload on our turbo actuator. Now the key to this is that you want a small amount of preloaded pressure on this actuator here. Um, you don't want it to be loose, so you don't want it to have any sort of play back and forth when the actuator is fully shut. So in order to loosen this, all you have to do is grab yourself an adjustable wrench, and these should, should come preloaded from the factory, but it's always good to check this because this is what's controlling your boost in your car. Um, and you don't want that to you know, have any sort of detrimental effect. You don't want to over boost to the setup um, and cause any sort of catastrophic failure. So we're gonna loosen that up and you can see this adjustment nut can be spun back. And then this unit right here can be spun in or out in order to pre-configure that load. Now how much load is the correct amount of load. Now, a lot of people get this confused. When you shut your wastegate all the way, a lot of people think that this should slip right on without any sort of fuss, any sort of pressure, um, and that is where this is often done incorrectly. Now, we've got a really good look at this now, and you can see that there is a gap between the wastegate lever and the wastegate actuator arm here. And that's actually exactly what we want. We want this to have, when this is fully shut, so pressed back, the wastegate is fully shut inside the exhaust, we want to have to pull our wastegate actuator arm here, which, which is spring-loaded. We want that to be pulled just a little bit and have a tension on this. So let's loosen this, and I'm gonna show you what it looks like when it's not correct. So now you can see this goes on and off really easily. And as a result, there is a small amount of play in this. So if we exaggerate this even more, it's extra loose now. And you can see there's play in this. So what that's gonna result in is actually leaking of your boost pressure. So when you should be having a really tight seal and really, really you know, compressing all of that air inside your turbo here, you're gonna be bypassing a lot of that boost right into the exhaust if it's loose. So we wanna tighten this down. One, two, three, four, until there's a little bit of a gap there. A gap on the wastegate actuator arm side, then we're gonna bring it forward just a little bit and slide it right down on top. Now, after you've done that, it's really important that you do want to go ahead and tighten up this lock nut. And then you're going to want to install or reinstall the lock ring on the actual arm here so this doesn't come off during operation. There we go. Make sure that's nice and in place. And then we're gonna go ahead and lock this Sucker down here, just like that. So now we have preloaded our wastegate actuator. All right, so that is gonna wrap up this episode. Pretty short and sweet, um, nothing too complicated here, but if you guys have any questions about how to set that pretension on your wastegate actuator, um, or any questions about the way a turbo works in general, feel free to post those in the comment section below. Um, there are tons and tons of different parts and accessories and all sorts of different stuff that you can use to manage your boost pressure, to manage your wastegate actuator, um, all that stuff. Really, really cool stuff. Um, turbos in general are really, really just um, mod friendly. Um, you can do all sorts of really neat things with them. I am not gonna cover them in this episode, but there are a lot of really cool parts that I'm excited to show you guys. I'm partnering with a few really cool companies. 
Go Fast Bits is gonna be one of those sponsors. Um, I'm really, really excited to show you guys the stuff that they're sending over for me, um, but I'm not gonna give that away just yet. Um, and hopefully, uh, the next time you guys see me, um, it will be in a finished garage. Um, still lots to do. Lots and lots to do. So thanks so much, guys, for joining me on the short and sweet episode. Um, and until I see you guys again, you know that drill. Enjoy those minis and motor on.